Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building who has more vacation days than all of us put together. <laughs> Don't do that. Yes, Ashanti, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. How many vacation days does Ashanti oh have? You my are God. always on Listen, damn vacation. I defended you before you walked in here. I said <laughs> she you, probably Ange. be working, and then when you work, you take a day. Exactly. And she has a bathing suit line. Exactly. Bro. Thank you, bro. And she's uh, been celebrating her birthday for two months. <laughs> Okay. Two months. Now, but, you know and, I don't have a problem with that. But listen, we coming out of a pandemic. You got to celebrate life. So I feel like you got to celebrate your birthday for an extensive amount of time. I heard you going back on vacation. I what? am. See? <laughs> okay. He she might, has more he might be right, Ashanti. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Uh, well, congratulations on winning the Lady of Soul Award. Thank you. And also the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Hey, thank did you, they, thank did you. they give you the star yet? Did you go out there yet? No. Not yet? When is um, it's yeah. actually happening in April of next year, which is dope because it'll mark exactly 20 years since my first album. So it's a whole 20 year anniversary and the star and all that good stuff. So that you're re-recording right now. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, don't do and it. Irv does not like that you are re-recording your first album. <laughs> Wee! So so break down for people that don't know, why are you re-recording your first album? So as an artist, when you are in the game for a certain amount of time, you pay your dues and things are supposed to come back to you. When Correct. you have a legal team that does what they're supposed to do so that you're able to function and own. Mm -hmm. So with my album being 20 years old in April, obviously it makes sense for me to go in and re-record so that I can collect my coins. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's not necessarily changing the vibe, but mm -hmm. kind of just injecting something new sonically into it. And maybe I might put a few features on there, you know, mm -hmm. source it up a little bit. But I bit. thought after 20 years, I thought you automatically, as an artist, you get your masters back after a certain amount of time in the industry. You That's get the true? right to re-record. Oh. You get the right to re-record. So what happens is once I re-record that and that's available, then that's what goes to all of the streaming platforms. And then all of those residuals and that money comes to me. Now, before gotcha. that happened, you know I mean? had you ever tried to like negotiate a deal? Because, you know, sometimes when an artist first signs, you, you were only 14. When I had my first record deal, I was 14. I was signed to Jive. Right. Mm -hmm. You were signed to Jive. Mm -hmm. And then you did this deal. So well, sometimes... actually like three record deals later. But oh, yeah. damn. Yeah. It was that many? It was a lot. People think that it was just like, hey, I met John. It was on, but no. I had three failed record deals. Yes. Right. I knew you had one at 14. So, damn. Yeah. So, Murder, Inc. was really kind <laughs> yeah, of like Yeah, like number the, four, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's really where... Did you ever feel like, I don't know if this is going to happen before that? Um, I did. After college, you know, everyone was like, well, what happened? We thought you were going to... You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, it was it was a little embarrassing. It was did you go like, to college? I did. I went to... I got accepted to Hampton. I deferred from Hampton. I got accepted to Princeton on a track scholarship, and it was one other school, but I deferred for like two years because mm -hmm. I was pursuing music. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, we picked the right thing. <laughs> you never negotiated, like she said, you never negotiated to get your masters back from Irv? We, okay. I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna slide it. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, what I spoke about was giving me my files. So when I'm performing on tour, the band has what they need to collectively create the records the right way, mm -hmm. right? So my sounds and my sessions and my music so we could separate everything and a band could play the records as opposed to playing on a two-track. Mm -hmm. So we spoke about that a couple of years ago, and it was an issue. You know what I mean? So I'm just at a real positive so place. So he want to give you the files for that? Nothing. Right. I'm at a positive place. You know, I like to keep positive energy around me. I got to protect myself. Mm -hmm. If other people are not on that wave, I operate on a different vibration. You know what I'm saying? So, it's business. Yeah. So does he own the Masters? Does Irv own the Masters? No. He said he owned the Masters. Didn't he say on a, on a tweet that he owned the Masters and it's going to mess up his property? Well, here's... Okay, what I can say is that's a conversation for Universal. Let me let me take that back and not just jump out the window and say no. Me and John had a very long conversation. Me and John know what time it is and let Universal answer that, I guess. Okay, so Universal owns the Masters. That's, that's what you're saying <laughs> between the lines, allegedly. So let me ask you a question. <laughs> Now, this is just, I'm asking because you guys were a unit. You guys were tight. Y'all went through beefs. Y'all had problems. Y'all rolled on everybody. Y'all wrote for teams. Y'all helped other artists blow up. Do you feel like since Murder, Inc. is no, you're not a part of Murder, Inc. anymore, mm -hmm. that it should be a conversation and you should get your masters back just like maybe Ja got his masters back? Do you think as, because y'all were family, y'all did a lot, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there's mm -hmm. a lot that you didn't get paid for that you did. Mm -hmm. Do you think that should be what it is? See, 
I've been on a path for a minute now of just, again, just being positive. There were several conversations. You know, I threw up mad white flag emojis. I'm about peace. Let's bury the hatchet. You know, there's been an amazing foundation. You know, we'll always be linked musically. Mm-hmm. We've created history. We've broken records. All of that. So to me, it's kind of senseless that it's at this point. Right. You know, but when people are unhappy and and bitter and, and you know, it, it affects you mentally and some of your judgment. You know, so I've always come from a place of I'm, I'm a Libra. Let's have a conversation. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about it. Let's figure this out. This doesn't make any sense. But I can't force anybody. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you know, a man has his prerogatives to do and say what he wants to do. That doesn't mean it's right. You ain't put Mama Shanti on it? You ain't put Mama on it? <laughs> <laughs> I was on it. She said, you know, I was on it. <laughs> I had the gag on. Had gag on. But, you know, I, I wanted to know because, you know, you mm-hmm. are part of Murder in History. So mm-hmm. when... Murder, Inc. does the documentaries and the movie. I'm sure they would want you to be a part of it. But, you know, as an artist, would Listen, you want to maybe, be a part of look, it? Look, maybe not. Like, oh, I'm just asking yeah. for mine. What's, <laughs> what I feel is deserved to me. And if I don't get that, why should I help you out with yours, you know? So... That has to be hard, too, because I'm sure you and Jaru have a good relationship. Yeah. So when he comes to you and he's making that appeal, but then you're like, I don't want to, but Ja. And- ja is in, is, he's in a weird position. <laughs> I'm telling you, we had that conversation recently. Ja's in like- a weird position with everybody, I swear. <laughs> with Fat Joe, he's cool with Fat Joe. Fat Joe's cool with, like, Ja is in yo, a weird position it's cr- everywhere. everywhere. It's crazy. And... He was just like, look, you my sister, I love you. That's my brother, I love him. I don't want to be a part of this. You know what I mean? He's mm-hmm. like, I'm out. You know, but he also knows what's right. You know, mm-hmm. brother or not, sister or not, you know right is right. Mm-hmm. And like I said, we had that conversation and I'm good and I'm glad that we're on the same page. Right. You know? It has to be annoying when you talk about things and you're expressing yourself and then you don't know if a tweet is going to come or and then it turns into a whole well, you bigger situation. You know that was going to come. You know, uh, you a know whole Irv bigger situation. Do an interview right now. You know Irv. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It's just like it's too much. You know, at a certain age, you know, you would think that your mental would be in a different place. You know what I'm saying? Like with this social media, that's forever, you know? So you got to just be careful how you displace your emotions. What's good about you is I never see you throw shade. It, right, and I could. That's the crazy part. And I don't. When it comes to a lot of different things mm-hmm. and people saying stuff and you always keep it classy, mm-hmm. Go, you because go high. The, l- listen, exactly. <laughs> you got to go high. And it's just like... I, c- I just oh, want to tell y'all. The theme music? Mama said before she came in there, make sure your phone is off. And mama's and then phone the ain't off. Yeah. And then mama's phone ain't off. She said, Mama said, I got two phones. But, um, dang, what did you just say? We we're talking about you keeping it classy and going yeah, high. Yeah, because the thing about it, too, is I can be. Mm-hmm. I know so much. I know how to hit below the belt. I know all of that. Mm -hmm. But I choose not to because what's the sense? You know what I'm saying? I'm not benefiting out of any of that. I don't get a high off of trying to put somebody down or exposing the real you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm cool. Like You ever type something and then delete it and be like... (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) I know what you mean. You'd be like, hold up. Okay, you know what? Don't let me... (laughs) Did did y'all start recording yet or not yet? Not yet. What are you waiting for? Um, Well, I just got off tour. And do you have to reproduce the records too? We have the option to. Okay. That's the thing. Because there are certain things, that, the way that I may want to do it, there are certain ways that may involve him, and there are ways to do it that does not. You know what I mean? So obviously, <laughs> you go with the latter. So there are so many different um, vibes, but I wanted to wait and kind of get off tour, kind of decompress, and then get that energy, you know? And I want to reach out to a lot of artists also, because the idea that I have, I think, is 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 super crazy. So What's I want to be right. Well, just... I mean, I'm fortunate enough to have everyone kind of love the first album. So every a lot of people are familiar with it. So I kind of, well, I don't even know if I want to say this because, you know, somebody may feel a way and try to throw some salt in the game. That is, that is, that is true, too. <laughs> you know, babe, let's have that conversation. That is true, too. That, that is true, too. <laughs> and now I, I heard you do, You got a book. You signed a book deal. Yes. We're Harpers and Collins. Very excited about that. Now, the um, book is going to be what? Talking about your life and everything you signed? No, 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 no. She's that's like, slow not, down. No, that's not that. Um, <laughs> it's actually a children's book. Okay. And it's really, really cool. It kind of focuses on being okay with being different. You know, my mm-hmm. name is very different, Ashanti. There's a lot of kids that go through kind of bullying and stuff like that with being different and being weirded out by things that are different. So it's kind of that vibe. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited about it because clearly my name originates from Ghana. Mm-hmm. And we're kind of putting an aspect that makes sense to have it come from there. Not there, but have what's that the name, vibe. What's the name of the book? 
My name is Ashanti. My name is Ashanti. Do you yeah. do you meet a lot of people who name their children after you? Or were yes, named that's after the you? craziest thing. I literally just saw a comment. I want to say two days ago on my Instagram, and this lady was like, "Oh my gosh, I named my daughter after you," <laughs> and I think that's like the cutest, most you know, honorable thing. It's, it's super cool. Now, I was going to say, back to what MB was talking about earlier, this isn't the first time somebody's done this, though. Like, Taylor Swift has mm-hmm. re-recorded. Mm-hmm. Didn't Jay-Z do it also? I'm not sure. I don't think he'll do Remember it. when Jay-Z did that live performance, mm-hmm. and he was doing it to re-record oh, okay. his album? Okay. I thought that's what it was for. So mm-hmm. this is not, like, unheard of. So I just right. want to put that out there. This Absolutely. is something that happens in the business. Absolutely. It's not unheard of. It's not a disrespectful thing. It's not about trying to take away from something. It's about growing and maturing and Mm -hmm. understanding ownership is important. You Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And being an artist in the game this long, you would think somebody is happy and wants Mm -hmm. to help you move forward and push your ball forward and the whole family celebrate. You know what I mean? Like for me, that's what Mm -hmm. makes sense. Right. Because I, I would applaud you for wanting to get your money and support that. And I feel like he's made a lot of money too. Absolutely. So it's not like (laughs) Like, you sign and then the next day, but it's been 20 years. 20 years, bro. Like Mm -hmm. what? It seems like it's been a a resurgence of Ashanti in the last, I would say five years. Do you feel that? (laughs) (laughs) You know what? I do. I do. do Where do you think it's from? Um, God's timing, God's plan. You know, there's been so many things. I don't talk about a lot. There have been a lot of things that have happened behind the scenes. You know, it forced me to grow. Mm -hmm. Um, I do plan on, well, I am working on a documentary that's going to, like, I don't want to use the word expose, but give more of a transparent, deeper look into a lot of things. Because I come, I'm transparent, I talk to Mm y'all, you know, I'm not guarded, Mm -hmm. but there are just things that people don't know and that I haven't spoken about, you know, in depth and in detail. So um, I feel like those five years of me growing, getting my own record label, Mm -hmm. doing it on my own, you know, understand who's with me and who's not, understanding the tools from the real friends, you know, a lot of that has come into play. You know, and just having an amazing team. So I guess the resurge has been a lot of work put into focusing on the goal. Gotcha. Is that out of respect for other people that you feel like you don't tell too much? That pe- you Like you say, there's a lot of things you could say that you don't. So why don't you? Um, I'm, I'm very much on the, when <laughs> they go low, <laughs> we go high. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm just very much on that. And I just, I feel like you, you... You get back what you put out there, you know? And again, like, when you're unhappy and you're miserable and you're bitter, you know, you try to throw salt at whatever is mm-hmm. going if you don't have anything to gain from it. You know what I mean? Um, me, personally, I'm not on that wave. You know, I'm happy, I'm cool, I'm content, you know? So I don't have a need or a desire to try and hurt somebody or intentional try and make somebody feel salty or away. Got you. Now, you, you also have a movie coming out. Yeah. Uh, shortly at the top of the year. So what's this movie about? Well, I'm actually shooting it top of the year in okay. January. I think we're no, I think sh- you were talking about the movie you shot in Toronto. Oh. When is that movie coming out? Did that come came out? out. Yeah, oh, it's called Honey Girls. Okay. It's streaming everywhere. It's this one is actually. called The Plus One, I would yes. say. Yeah, okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I'm executive producing, producing that one. Super excited about that. It's like a rom-com. Um, Cedric the Entertainer plays my dad. I believe Vanessa <laughs> Williams is playing my mom. Mm-hmm. And it's basically, I'm getting married and my best friend um, is a guy. And I'm like, listen, you can invite whoever you want except for your ex, because me and his ex do not rock. Mm-hmm. And who does he invite? The ex, of but course. Why would you do that? Okay. <laughs> exactly. If you're my friend, why would you do that to my at my wedding? So I was gonna ask, you know, uh, are you always surprised when some of the, the younger artists fuck with you so hard, whether it was Tory or the Baby or Moneybag Yo? Does that ever surprise you? Oh. And how do they get in touch with you? Do, do, they DM you? do you answer your DMs? <laughs> Yo, Ev, if I were to show you my DMs right now, you would bug out. You would really bug out. Um, okay, is surprise the word? A little bit of surprise and a little bit of, oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, the, the, the respect and the love, for lack of words, the admiration is so dope. You know, when I get into the studio with these guys, and a lot of them come through DM. Mm-hmm. Money you know. bag, yo. That's how Wakisha happened, right? Didn't yeah. You, you know what I mean? Do you answer your DMs, or is it your sister or your mom? Or you <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I answer. I, I, okay. I, I double and dabble in okay. DM a little bit. Now um, they know. <laughs> now, you, now they know it's not mama. <laughs> right, right. But, um, 
You said it'd be a different story with his mama. <laughs> and I saw a scissor I, interrupt the interview you were doing just to pay you your respect. Yeah, like that was such a beautiful moment. Shout out to SZA, you know, and the fact that she had the picture to back up what she was saying. Basically, she said she stood online for like 10 hours to get an autograph from a book signing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then she posted the picture. She had a little glasses on and stuff. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's just so surreal to mm-hmm. me. You know, like to get the love and the respect is 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 a very humbling feeling. Who was the surprise person that DM'd you that you was like, wow? I, I don't even want to tell. <laughs> cool. She looking at it right now. Like, yeah, I'm like, like woo. Um, <laughs> some of some of y'all favorite rappers. Mm-hmm. Are they trying know? to holler or are they just want to do music or a little bit of both? It's a little bit of both. Do they put their feet out there to see Right, to test is. the water right, a little right, bit right, to right. see the temperature. Um, <laughs> some athletes. You know, some, some, you know. <laughs> now, last we heard you were in a relationship, though, that you're keeping I mean, it low. Super low. It, we've been dating. It's It's been a really nice, smooth ride. You know who people think it is? Who? You tell me. <laughs> oh, my Stop. God, Evie, that was asking. terrible. Every what time, are you talking about, about? I ain't talking about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying you always on vacation. I'm just saying. That's all I'm saying. Somebody oh, that... wait, wait, wait. Say it. Let's let's you let's say it. You no, clear you it up. say it. You clear it up. No, you say it. Say who you is think it is. Is that your brother or your man? You oh, tell him it's your brother. You tell him. Gosh. You clear it up. I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> See? Let the people know. Let them know. Ashanti is not with Flo Rada. Shout out to Flo Be Rada. clear. That's my guy. That's my brother. That's my brother. Me and Flo are super cool. You know what it is with so crazy? I like to vacate, mm-hmm. right? I got a crew of girls and my family. Flo got his crew and his family. We've been going to each other's birthday parties for like 10 years. So I don't know why it's like such a surprise uh, now. You're always on vacation together and people don't no, know what they see. No. it's First of all, it's not always together. But, <laughs> Let me make it guys in it up. <laughs> But it's just he's a good vibe and our he's teams, a good dude. yeah, mm-hmm. our teams are so cool and he just likes to have fun and family and celebrate. I promise you, it has never ever been anything remotely, look, remo- <laughs> remotely close to that. Shout out to Flo, that's my bro, Flo, Flo. You know, it's it's all family. I'm. It's confusing though that people really like run with something that they believe just because they believe it and they carry the story. Mm -hmm. Like, that's bizarre to me. I have never in my life posted a dude that I'm dealing with, ever. Ever? I mean, maybe Nelly on a flyer or something like that, Mm -hmm. like 100 years ago. But nothing like, (laughs) oh, we're together. Never. Why is that, though? I like to keep things private. Nothing wrong with that. That might hurt a dude's heart, though. He, he, he's dating you, and then you won't post him? I don't think she would date somebody that's hurt that he's not posted on Instagram. Guys be having feelings. They definitely have feelings. See? And listen, they I had found, that conversation listen, before. Listen, uh-huh. I found man, out. You and the guy had that conversation <laughs> before. You had to. I definitely found out that the, the non-posting was a little bit of an issue. Because you like the man in the relationship. Because, you know, men usually don't post their chicks. <laughs> but no. So you but, flip the script on No, them. it's really... Mm, it's a little balance. It's half and half. Okay. I like to be super low, especially until things are like solid, solid. How you know solid what I mean? Do you want it? She gonna get want listen. She gonna the post the wedding day. <laughs> post the wedding day, right? In her dress. <laughs> we did it. We did it. But listen, there are at least two two people super heavy in the industry. We dated and we never posted. Mm-hmm. I would never. So how the fact nobody that catch I posted, y'all? How did nobody catch y'all when you, you know go what's out? crazy? So we went to the movies one time. And um, two of the, um, what's the movie? It's kind of private. And they bring you the food and stuff at the pier. Oh, like the um, I pick theaters? Right, mm-hmm. right. And two of the girls was like, oh, you seen the shot team? I'm about to put that on. Da-da-da-da. And my sister walked up behind them and was like, no, you're not. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so there's been little instances, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just like respectfully, don't do that. Right. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. there have been instances. It's been kind of close, but... I'm the type of person where I like to keep my stuff low, you know? So if you see me posting, I'm not dealing with him, period. Got you. <laughs> then you feel it works better that way because you don't have the world in your business. Yeah. I mean, when you get to that time, then cool. You know, when both people are like, okay, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. I'm not an overkill anyway. Like, it's not going to be like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to do that. Um, now, let me ask you this. Was your man upset when the verses happened and Nelly walked over and it turned into a huge thing? Because I'm sure that it can't feel good when something like that happens. And I also know that guys can be insecure. Like, Right. Um, He's super secure. And I was like, hey, did you watch? 
He was like, yeah, I seen it. It was quiet. He said, yeah, I seen him walk across the stage. And I was like, yeah. But he didn't elaborate. He didn't go too crazy. You know, he laughed a little That's bit. That's also but how you wasn't... reacted too, though. Your reaction was good. <clears throat> yeah. Your reaction, you, you act know? like you ain't see him at first. Be like, oh, oh, hey, oh, I didn't see him. <laughs> <laughs> That's because that was. Now, if you'd have went a little too much like the hug. Right. If the hug would have lasted. That would have been a conversation. But you you played it right. Yeah. And I I, I mean, I feel like I've been saying this forever, but that has been our first interaction after like six years, I Mm -hmm. think, you know. And that situation was a long time. It was like a long time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So to spend that much time with someone and then be gone from that person, not see that person, and then... You know, the first time is like in front of everyone. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I think that's how. What, sometimes, if you see somebody or communicate with them too much, when you break up, you end up getting back together. Yeah. Too. Sometimes the best way is to not see. Each yeah, other. absolutely. Cold turkey. Bye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, also, so how was this tour? The tour was dope. It was super dope. You know, the fact that we are still dealing in a pandemic, mm-hmm. coming out of one, and we were doing arenas every night. That was on tilt. Build. So I think it's a blessing, you know, to be able to hold out the microphone and hear 10,000, 20,000 people singing records that I wrote 20 years ago. You know what I mean? So it's a super humbling feeling. I was the only female. Mm. Did you feel like, you know, because I was looking at that tour. You weren't on that tour back in the day. Like that was the kitty tour back in the day. <laughs> so how was it being on the kitty? Because it was like the, the they were the kids. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So how was being on that tour with, with the With the, the younger. Yeah. Well, they're not you, kids anymore, but. Right. But the. the That goes to show you the power of music and how music is universal. You know what I mean? Obviously, Mm -hmm. we all have different demographics and age ranges and, and, you know, females, males, whatever. But for me, it was such an amazing feeling because, yeah, these kids were younger. You know what I mean? But they rock in the same way as they are with everyone else, Mm -hmm. you know? So for me, again, being the only female, you know, and coming from my world, it felt really good to get the same love and, and if it really did feel like 2002. You know, I'm one of those artists, I still do meet and greets, mm-hmm. right? And I feel like just coming out, again, coming out the pandemic, you want to create these memories because you mm-hmm. never know what's going to happen. True. So I'm doing meet and greets and it's like people are crying. They're coming up showing me tats on my face and, you wow. know, pictures. And I'm just like, yo, this is crazy. You would, you know? date a, would you date a guy if he had a tat of another chick on his arm? No. What about if he had you're a tat? You're getting that. Removed. Delete, removed. A- what if he had a tattoo of you? <laughs> what if he had a tattoo of you before he met you? And <laughs> um, that's kind of weird. Man. That's, that's kind of weird. weird. That's yeah. kind of weird. I don't know about that one. That's kind of weird. <laughs> but I'm sure you've had some pretty bad stalker situations too. I have. I have. Um, uh, my stalker. I don't know. I think he did three years. Sheesh. I want to say it was wild. It was wild. And the wildest part of that. Um, situation is he was actually in jail with Wayne. They was in the same cell block. Really? So when Wayne got out, it was so funny. We had a session together in Miami and he was like, yo, sis, I got to tell you about this guy. You know, so we started talking. He was like, yo, he's crazy. And I said, oh, my God, I can't believe my stalker was in the same cell block as Wayne. You know what I mean? But um, thank God it didn't get to a point where it was like... um. I felt like I was gonna be murdered. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't. It was a. It was a little obsessive mm-hmm. or a lot obsessive. Mm-hmm. But I'm cool. I'm safe. And the thing, how it started, was an eye opener. Something I had to learn because they were like, "Well, why do you feel like she wants to be with you? Why are you pursuing?" And his response was, "She made eye contact with me at the show in Chicago." Ooh. So, f- like, you know, obviously wow. something mentally is. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like. And that made you do all this, <laughs> you know? So it's it's scary. Because mm-hmm. the stalker laws aren't easy either because sometimes the cops will tell you they have to wait till something actually yeah, happens. happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. For them to even act. Absolutely. And I think that's so backwards. Like, it's too late at that time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Were you nervous when he got out? Um, A little bit. I was nervous when we had to travel because um, he was from Chicago. Mm-hmm. So whenever we went to Chicago, I had like five security with me. Five right. security right. there. You know what I mean? Just to make sure everything was all right. All right. Now, Ashanti, you, you reached out to me, I think, last month. It was, uh, I don't know if it, if it was, it was Domestic Abuse Month? Domestic Abuse Month? Yes. That, that was, uh-huh. yes. And you were telling me about 
uh, your sister and some of the things that she was dealing with and she released uh, footage and video and mm -hmm. she even spoke about it on Angie Martinez show. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I know your sister's supposed to be on yeah, her way. Yeah, she's supposed to be coming. Hopefully she... Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. So, so break down before she gets here. Well, what? do we want to wait? Let's yeah, wait, wait. We can wait. Okay. So I was going to ask, I was like, here. have you ever dealt with that in a relationship at all? Domestic abuse or... Um, thank God I've never dealt with any kind of domestic um, abuse. It's such a horrible, painful thing. Um, I don't think I would be able to last. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not a violent person, but when you cross the line, then it's like a whole different vibe for me. So it would be like bad. It would be both. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. um, I think it's important to create a platform and, and let people know like this is not okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In both ways, both situations, it's not okay. You know, so again, thank God I haven't, I've never dealt with that. Um, um, I mean, we all, you know, get into arguments, you know what I'm saying? But to take it past the line, that's when you know it's something mentally wrong. Right, you know, when, when it, it gets turns physical. Into physical and abusive and reoccurring, you know what I mean? That's a problem. I was going to ask, you know, y'all are such a tight family, right? Mm -hmm. You're very tight with your sister. You're very tight with your daughters. Mm -hmm. You're always out with each other. Um, did y'all not know? at all? Was she hiding it? Or was it one of those things where it was like you try to help where you can? Um, in the beginning, when things were not physical, there were certain things that m might have been tucked, but there were things that were seen. And it was red flags. You know what I mean? And then by the first time that things went down, it was like, okay, now we're making a move. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it was to kind of put everything into perspective with all the pieces involved, her, him, me, and the public, and your matters of the heart. And like, it was so much to swallow, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So no one really knows how to deal with that situation until it falls in your lap, you know? Um, but when we did, and th the one incident that uh, kind of broke the, you know, what do they say? Broke the, the on the camel's back, the staring on the camel's back. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the pictures where we saw with her jaw in her socket. Yes, her socket, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. That was a very bad day. And that was, you know, we saw and, you know, a different side of me came out that I don't like to talk about because I'm a peaceful person. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes to my sister, my mom, and my family, then all best is off. You know, then it's like, damn, who is that? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So. And, um, and I'll ask, you know, you guys as well. Y'all never thought about pressing charges? There was no charges pressed at all? Y'all didn't want to go that way because you didn't want it out there? Or, or, or why not? That's really a question for her. You know, I have my views. You know, I do know that... Um... I know a lot of people don't press charges because they don't want to be... They don't want that to be on them as that's the person for that reason. It, it wasn't so much that. Mm. It's sometimes other people put you in a predicament with the choices that they make. So now I got to make sure that they not coming because of the other stuff you got. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So it's 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 a combination of a lot of things. And again, this is me. You right. know, mm -hmm. she has her own response, you know, to that. And that's hard, too, because I'm going to say this. Like, I had a situation and the police came and I didn't want to press charges because I also still feel like as black women, as black people, we never want to put someone in jail. Right. And Absolutely. I don't know what the and I'm not saying that's the right way to feel. Right. But we also do not like calling 911. Mm -hmm. We do not like getting anybody arrested. Mm -hmm. It's just something that's like kind of ingrained in us, mm -hmm. even if we're wrong. And then we feel then they go to jail and then you feel bad that they're in. It's just yeah. a crazy thing. And it's totally messed up. It's so wrong because sometimes our loyalty, even when. There's no loyalty for us. We're still there protecting and nurturing. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's crazy. I don't even know how to like describe it and, and, and mentally um, understand it fully. But it's a sense of still, mm -hmm. after all of that, I'm still holding it down. And again, I'm not saying... You that's know, how I, she feels, but that's right. how you're looking. Mm -hmm. That's from, I'm looking mm -hmm. at like that's what I see a lot. You know, I wrote Rain On Me, a domestic mm -hmm. violence record. Yep. Mm -hmm. I have never been through that personally, but I've seen a lot. And you know, we always say things like, oh, I never want to see nobody end up in jail. I would never put jail on nobody. Like, right. we always say that. So mm -hmm. I just feel like that's just ingrained in us. And that's, that's something that needs to, to, to be fixed. 
be honest. Right, because mm-hmm. really people need to suffer repercussions Absolutely. from their actions. At one way or another. Right. <laughs> You know. <laughs> now, what else is on Ashanti's bucket list while we're waiting for Shia to get here, for your sister to get here? Mm-hmm. Let's talk more about that because I don't want to keep on speaking on right when she's not when here she's, when she's um, about to come in. Just I'm um, um, again just very very excited for what's to come next year with the book, with the star, with the documentary, with the album being re released. All of the stars are kind of like aligning, you know. And like I said earlier, like God's timing is like no joke, you know what I mean? And I just feel like. 2022 is going to be something super special. Um, and I do want to do the documentary, as we talked a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to have y'all on the list. Okay. <laughs> but um, I feel like now is a good time. Again, coming up on 20 years because I haven't really spoken about a lot of my story. You know, sometimes people forget that the label was federally indicted. Right. Mm-hmm. And they're like, damn, what happened here? Because Ashanti did, and did, but damn, what happened? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I've never really spoken about my side and how it affected me and how I was still out there, oh, baby, mm-hmm. when, you know, my family is on trial. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm flying back and forth from Canada to to, to uh, court dates. You know what I mean? Um, and again, just my personal people that I've dealt with, some of your favorite executives and things that have gone on. And this is not about a, oh, uh, let's tell. You mm-hmm. know, it's not that kind of vibe, but just stuff that I've gone through. And I want to kind of inspire women that you could do it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like being a young black woman in this male-dominated industry and be still being here right now, you know what I mean? Doing what I'm doing is a blessing. Yeah. And I want to encourage women, like, to keep going and keep doing it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I think that's really, really important. There's, there's a few people that came out with me and, you know, they may not be in the same position. You know what I mean? And you never know what kind of words of encouragement could have changed that. Mm-hmm. You know? So if, I feel like it's really important. If you could change one thing on this journey that you've done so far, what would be the one thing that you would change? <laughs> one thing that you would change on a journey? Who, you mean? Who, <laughs> 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 <Yeah, laughs> damn. All, all of the above. What would you change I do like your little Ooh. shade that you throw. It'd be subtle. <laughs> Um, I mean, that's a tough question. A side of me feels like there, <laughs> there's some choices that were made that I shouldn't have made, mm-hmm. you know, and I might want to delete that. Mm-hmm. Like what? Uh, like what? Relationship choices? <laughs> sign a label choices? I'm trying to see Because they answer. say everything's a learning lesson. So I, the fact that you want to delete that means it's like, look. But see, but here's the I other side. That here's the flip side of that. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't make me who I am right now. Correct. So I don't know if I really would want to delete that right. because it made me stronger. It made my character be what it is and it made me learn super fast. Listen, those mistakes are the things that you learn the most from. Yes, that's what like, I'm saying. you be like, never again. Yes, exactly. So that's why, like I said, you know, the 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 younger, immature maybe side of me would want to wipe it like you wipe your iPhone. Mm-hmm. But the other side is like, you wouldn't know and have the knowledge or the passion had you not gone through this really dark, messed up... I don't know if we can curse. Messed yeah, can. up time. <laughs> you know now, what I mean? What was the darkest time for you? Was it the indicting, when, when uh, Murder Inc. got indicted? Or was it a relationship? Or was it album sales? Or was it the beef time? What was the probably the darkest time for you? Um, I think the darkest time... It, it was kind of a combination of what was going on with me personally. And on top of that, the indictment and then not having a label and then, you know, dealing with that issue with the label Mm -hmm. and feeling um, betrayed and then still having a safe face and act like everything is cool. You know what I'm saying? And then walking away from offers from majors and not knowing. I remember I felt like, you know, when your stomach is in knots and you like you you might want to throw up, Mm -hmm. you know, And, and when I turned away my last offer, you know, from a major back at that time, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I sat in L.A. in the house and I was just sitting by myself and I'm like, OK, now I understand why people do drugs. Now I understand why people drink. I don't. Mm-hmm. But when you get to a to an emotional space like that, it's like, oh, now I get it. Because right. don't nobody want to think about you that. No one wants mm-hmm. to be in that space. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that was a learning lesson for me, too, because mm-hmm. I used to always you know, kind of look at it as weak, like, damn, you doing drugs? Why just man up, you mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. But then I was like, oh, 
<laughs> this, I need a this drink. Is why, <laughs> I need a drink. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This is why, you know, people choose that because you want to escape that. Right. It's scary. I don't wish it on no one. You know, um, I, I dealt with um, my cousin's death, which is something that I still struggle with. Like, there are so many different dark moments. And I feel like I'm I'm a relatable human being. And it's important to to show that you can go through all of that and still be here. You know what I'm saying? And still succeed. Right. So that's why I feel like it's important. It's part of the journey. Exactly. It's part of the journey. It's not. It's mm-hmm. never just a vacation. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Which is another reason why I take vacations. I see why. <laughs> now, did Ashanti ever go to a part where Ashanti was was low with money? Was was that ever an issue through your whole career? Was there ever a point where it was like, damn, I'm fucked up right now? You no know, vacations Diddy talks about this year. It. <laughs> Diddy talks about it one time where he was a little low. Has it ever been low? Like, we might be in trouble. It's okay. So it's been. See, first of all, I'm I'm very cheap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll just be honest. So we're looking at you and we don't believe that. <laughs> no, but it's like it got to a place where it had been like what, maybe eight years without putting out a single, a, an album, doing a show. You know what I mean? So it got to the point where it was like, okay. Sis, this is what we're going to do this Christmas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was never like a struggle, but it was an awakening. Like, look, you got to get you got to get to it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Thank God that I write my records and I will forever eat off my pub, mm-hmm. you know? So and that's another thing that's really important. I want artists to understand, too. But um, I don't feel like you should ever get to a place where you're just comfortable and you just you know, laying around all day. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that's just not, it's not for me. But there's been a time where it's just like, okay, you got to get to it. Like, there's only but so much that you could just maintain, you know? And again, some of that is mental. I, You know, my era from before Instagram to now is different. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, things are very different. The way we release music, the platforms, the, the amount, you know, the pennies, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, understanding all of that. So it, it it's definitely definitely been a journey. And you how think was you pay- could do your um, documentary without having Irv on it, or do you plan to have him in the documentary? Um, do I think I can have it without him? Yeah, because that's know? an important part of definitely the important story. part. It may it may not you know <laughs> coming from him and his mouth talking about certain things. Can I do without it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, um, hopefully there is a, a a a a place of peace. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, because you think if you ask him, he'll say, yes, I'll do I'll be in it. I'm not do- even in that headspace, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not. I was going to ask you. But now, what about mom? How do you pay mom? Do you pay mom a percentage? Oh, my <laughs> God. Cause it's I business. How do you pay your mother? Like, like, I mean, I got like. My wife's on salary, but it's not really salary. Right. She pay, takes what she wants. My daughter's on salary. That's for tax purposes, though. That's for tax purposes. Absolutely. Right. Do, you, do you pay moms, or does mom take what she wants? Like you it's know a, mean? it's it's honestly a common, very similar to what you just said. Yeah. Like yeah, she gets a percentage, but I also pay for this. I buy this. I pay for that. She asks for this. She get that. You know what I mean? Like it's not. There's no paperwork between us, Correct. which is you know right. what I mean. So it's very do ever, similar. Do you ever hate that mom's manager? Because she ain't here now. Do you ever like... Oh, uh, I mean, that's so reason, sneaky like, and shady. I, because now, nah, because it's, it's like, that's still out. your mom, though. Like, you know what I mean? Mom might look at you a little funnier sometimes. Uh-oh. <laughs> Does that ever bother you at all? Like, what? Like, mom being a manager, be like, damn, I wish today mom wasn't here. Does that, <laughs> do you ever have that moment? <laughs> I mean... And I love mom, by the way, but I'm just asking. Um, I mean, obviously, there's certain things, you know... It's like, ma. Because I know y'all close, right? Yes. Y'all close. But, but it's sometimes things, it's, yeah. It's you still mom. Exactly. Exactly. But we have a dope relationship. And she kind of feels when, you know, she'd be she like, oh, that, that's what you want today? All right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we definitely, we don't agree on everything. We definitely have our little arguments. Who wins those arguments? Those arguments? Cause mama don't play. So who wins those arguments? <sighs> See, we... <sighs> we're very similar. I'm, I'm stubborn. Mm-hmm. I'm very stubborn. But she's very, very... Very stubborn. You know, she holds <laughs> grudges, you When's know. the last time y'all got into an argument where y'all didn't speak for a minute? And what was it over? <sighs> I want to say one that sticks out in my mind. I was super young. 
And we got into, I think I had boys at my house, and one of the guys put like a hole in my wall or something. Ooh, what was he and doing? I know it was crazy. <laughs> and she was so like furious. We got into it, and I was like, I'm leaving. I think I was in high school. I put a backpack on. I was like, I'm leaving. And I'm, you know, I'm expecting her to come like after me. She slammed the door. Damn. I was like, damn. So I sat outside. I sat outside. Nowhere to go, but I'm leaving. Nowhere to go, but I'm leaving. Um, and let me see. Did, we talked, but kind of like when you have to. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? But this was super young. Like I'm, it was high school. I think I had on. Boss jeans and Eastlands that okay. way. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's up with this travel show? Um, something that I guess kind of makes sense. Okay. You know, working. I mean, because you're always on vacation. You know what I'm saying? But listen, be clear. <laughs> when I am on vacation, there is being a bag collected. So I don't think so. I promise you. I, I believe it. So. I promise you. Envy. I promise you. So if I'm going down there, I'm probably going to do a little appearance or a little vibe or whatever. And in the contract, that thing going to say five days paid. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? You know, you get your bag and, you know, especially around holidays and stuff like that. But I'm never not working, you know. So when you do see me, let me see. That's why the travel show makes so much sense. That's why it makes sense. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Because then you're really working. I'm working. Exactly. And having an amazing time. You could show people where to, where would you say if somebody was like, Ashanti, where should I go on vacation? (sighs) What would be the first place you're like? See, that's hard because honestly, it does, it does depend on who you're with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can go to a beautiful island, Mm -hmm. but if you're like with with a whack group, (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it, but it's it, also some things are romantic. And yeah, some private, things are romantic and some things are, and some things are family. Okay, so like, if you're gonna have fun, say you're going on a girls trip, where would you go? That's hard because I'm I've been everywhere. Um, <laughs> Stun on them, girl. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. What's on my vibe right now? Jamaica is always fun. I love Jamaica. Jamaica is always fun. I jumped in the Blue Lagoon the last time I was there. We did Reach Falls. We went to Frenchman's Cove. We had the boat party. Like, mm-hmm. it's so many different things to do. Love the food. All right. So talk about what's Arts Help. What, what is Arts Help? So Arts Help is this amazing um, organization I'm working with, mm-hmm. and it's about fighting climate change. Mm-hmm. You know, the world is kind of messed up, you know, with the plastic and mm-hmm. what's going on with the water and the ocean and all of that stuff. So I think it's really important to kind of, like, create that awareness. And basically, like... Um, the organization creates these grants and these programs for artists to kind of get involved. Mm-hmm. And they, they have these educational programs where you could learn what to do and how you could help. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's called um, Cryptocurrency Creator. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, it's, it's really, really dope. And it kind of just gives you ways that you could do your part in helping to save and, and create climate change. Mm-hmm. You know, so, wait, so. so what does it have to do with cryptocurrency? Is there... No, 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 no. It's not really cryptocurrency. It's like being conscious. So conscious of... Conscious... Crypto creator. Okay. That's what it is. <laughs> I was so, like, wait, so is it, do you, have you invested in crypto or anything like that? Are you paying attention to that? You know what's crazy? I was talking to the guy who runs this program, and he was telling me that with NFTs and all of that, if you're not powered by the right source, mm-hmm. even that is kind of messing up the planet, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Cause really? I, yeah, I didn't He's know. about mining. Because I'm like, digitally, mm-hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? He's like, even that... I think, what is it, POW and POS, whatever your NFT is powered by, mm-hmm. if it's the wrong one, it's doing damage to the planet. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I learned that from, you know, talking to the the guy, Mo, who, who organizes all of this. And I was like, that's so bizarre. You would think digitally it's not affecting, mm-hmm. but it really is, which right. is crazy. So I don't know. Like, I'm not super into it too much. Mm-hmm. I know that it's super relevant and a lot of people I think Ja has a whole world of mm-hmm. what is it metaverse and, yeah he's in <laughs> you know the metaverse yeah. like yeah he was I on think, it early yeah very early cause mm-hmm. you see somebody bought like a plot of land near Snoop Dogg's <laughs> metaverse <laughs> yes. Like, yes I'm like what is this exactly <laughs> exactly so I'm not super on it yet um, but I'm glad I kind of found out that information so when I do jump in mm-hmm. I know which way to go gotcha you know? no climate change is we were talking about that the other day like, because you can feel it, like, with the weather. Yeah, And, and they're scary. talking about places that'll be underwater. Yeah, it's and, scary. It's so scary. And there's little things, like, when you're brushing your teeth, turn the water off. Mm-hmm. If you're not home, turn the lights turn off. Turn the lights off. You know what I mean? I can't stand when people things. be leaving the lights and the television on. Yeah. And... I don't understand that either because of the damage that's happening. You know, I don't know what's going to happen 
10 years from now. I want my kids to be straight. I want to be able to swim and <laughs> not swim in poison. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah like, I think that absolutely. is so selfish when people don't care what's going to happen when they're not on this planet anymore. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Abs- and they say that. They be like, well, it ain't going to affect me. What? Yeah. yeah. You know? That's crazy. Well, guys, I have to go. Oh, damn. I got to go get to I got to get home. I got to go shower, change. All right. Well, I know we had a lot more that we wanted to talk about today. Yeah. In particular, we wanted Shia to come in and speak uh, about what she has going on. Yes. And she's been really open about it. I was telling you, I saw her post, mm-hmm. you know, behind the scenes. I was telling you on her 31st birthday and what she went through mm-hmm. and the fact that she's being open and honest and transparent mm-hmm. about everything. So, Ken, I know his traffic has been crazy, though. Oh, my gosh. I'm so, like, I'm frustrated. You know what I mean? Because... Like, I really want this for her, and she wants this so bad because it's such an amazing platform to just get her story out, you know, and, and her journey, and it's so important, you mm-hmm. know, and I want the time to be right. I want her to do that, so yes. if we can do this next week. Yes. Because I know Envy had to leave, and then, yeah. but I definitely want to make sure that she's able to come on here and express herself the way that she needs to and get her story out there because definitely. it's going to help. So many people, and I know so many people have hit her up already, Mm -hmm. just from her being on with you on Angie Mm Martinez's show. Absolutely, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Yes, I mean, nothing is like New York traffic, especially coming from Long Island. Especially around the holidays. Yes. It's been terrible. Terrible, terrible. But yeah, I would love for her to come back up, share her story. You know, I know you can relate, you know what I mean? So I think it's it's, it's super important, and thank you guys. I, I appreciate it. All right, yeah. so Shia next week. Is yes, come Shia up here. next week. <laughs> you got to for the early time. <laughs> well, thank you, Ashanti. We appreciate you. It's always um, amazing to have you in studio. Thank you. And you're such a role model for so many people. And thank congratulations you. on everything. I appreciate it. You know, the star, it. the 20 years. Whew. For the album, <laughs> the re-recording, the book, mm-hmm. the movie. I mean, that's, that's a lot. I'm super, You deserve super a vacation. Humble. Right? I think I should go on vacation. (laughs) (laughs) All right, it's the Breakfast Club.